Minister of Tourism, Minister Mamoloko Kubai Ngubani, will be giving an update on the tourism sector. Minister. And I can set that down below. Um, I'm joined by the Director General of the Department of Tourism delivering this message um, to our sector and to the nation. The pandemic has undeniably been devastating for the tourism sector, resulting in many businesses not being able to keep their doors open or battling to survive as their revenue and sales continue to shrink, leading to forced staff reductions or retrenchments. As we pick up not from where we have left, but rather in a new environment, we are putting together the pieces of a new path towards recovery as many people in our sector return to work to provide for their families following months of hardship as we tra traverse through our sorry, as we traverse through one of the most difficult period in the history of our country and indeed the world. Our road to recovery as a sector has begun. We will, in the coming weeks, consolidate inputs received on the tourism recovery strategy before we submit our plan to cabinet. Our intention as the department is to start as soon as possible working together with our sector with the implementation of the recovery plan. We are mindful that this is, a criti this is critical as tourism is one of the pillars of the broader South African economic recovery and growth. We are appreciative of the role played by various organizations in all subsectors, small businesses in, in townships, rural communities, the women in tourism, the youth in tourism, and other individuals who have reached out to make submissions as we move towards rebuilding of our sector. Heightened cooperation, out, heightened cooperation and partnerships amongst all sector players are essential as we implement our response plan and lay a foundation for a healthier, more resilient, and competitive future. Our analysis of the global trend is that today and tomorrow's traveler is looking for a destination that offers diversity. They will be still cautious to move from one country to the other during their tours and therefore are looking for a country that offers more experiences. South Africa as a destination offers variety and diversity diversity in terms of attractions, products, and activities with world-class experiences, giving us competitive and comparative advantage amongst other destinations for this new global traveler. We will continue to do this analysis and rebuild our marketing proposition of Destination South Africa. This as we move one step at a time. We are highly encouraged by the interest we are seeing from both domestic and international investors looking for opportunities in the tourism sector. This gives hope that the supply side of tourism sector will not only recover but of a potential to surpass where we were as a sector prior to the pandemic. Our responsibility is to ensure that as we recover and grow, we bring along the previously disadvantaged groups. Therefore, ensuring inclusivity, transformation, and sustainability of our tourism sector. We will use our tourism equity fund as a mechanism to support this transformation imperative in the sector. Ladies and gentlemen, the announcement by President Ramaphosa to move to alert level two 
of the COVID-19 risk-adjusted strategy as from Tuesday 18th August 2020 marked a significant leap and milestone for the tourism sector. The move will reignite businesses, business activities, save jobs, and the many livelihoods that are facing difficulties during this pandemic. We therefore welcome the decision by Cabinet to permit tourism services for the categories as stated in the gazetted regulations. We have developed directions for the tourism sector to provide further clarity on the existing regulations issued to limit the spread of the virus and in a manner that they can be adaptable in a rapidly changing context. As we open up the sector, we are therefore confident that measures have been put in place to protect employees, suppliers, tourists, and all those who, have, who are involved with the sector. As government, we remain committed to work in a coordinated manner to ensure recovery that meets the national development objectives. Our main goal is to ensure that no tourism facility becomes a source of the spread of the pandemic. And we encourage that since we are sorry, and we are encouraged that since the beginning of the opening and bringing back the activities in the tourism sector, we are doing well and we've not seen us being a source of the spread. I want to say to the sector and all those who participate and who are supporting the tourism industry that let us keep this up. Let us keep this trend to become the norm in the tourism sector. And also, let us hold one another accountable against this commitment for the sake of our people and the country and the industry. I will now highlight the areas that have been opened up at under level two of risk-adjusted strategy. Under accommodation, the requirements announced under level three remains, meaning all those issues that we've raised about record keeping, social distancing, and ensuring that we wear the mask where necessary, where expected, in terms of our facilities remain. And what we are adding into this direction is that, because previously we were only allowing the intra provincial travelers for leisure. Now we are saying accommodation are allowed to accommodate any South African within those facilities. But we also emphasize that in our direction, within their breakfast areas, within their reception area, in order to ensure that there is a safe distance, the social distancing requirement, they need to ensure that the 50% occupancy in terms of floor space is maintained. Under restaurants, Again, here we are saying the announcements that have been made in terms of the directions under level three remain. In addition to this is the on-site consumption of alcohol, which is permitted for licensed restaurants and bars. I need to indicate because we do have bars within our hotels and if they do operate, we want to emphasize that all of our facilities must adhere to the uh, curfew at 10 p.m. So curfew, curfew, sorry, curfew starts at 10 p.m. We request South Africans that you are not going to be found on the streets because you come from the restaurants at 10 p.m. Because I can assure you, Minister Tele will be on the streets waiting for you. So we want to appeal as you support the sector, please ensure that the curfew time applies to all the restaurants, to all those who are providing services in terms of our facilities and our sector. Having visited restaurants myself in the past few weeks, I'm encouraged to see a lot of innovation from the subsector, such as where you are able to scan using your phone a barcode and you are able to see the menu on your hands. This actually assists for many of us to be able to enjoy our meals without having to worry that the menu I'm holding has been in another person's hand. So I want to create, continuously encourage this innovation in our sector as part of uh, becoming and living with a new normal. Places of attractions are now opened. This includes but not limited 
to theme parks, amusement parks, water parks, family entertainment centers, zoos, aquarium science centers, nature and game reserves, national parks and other entertainment and cultural activities. Tourism attractions must ensure social distancing and marking sorry, must ensure social distancing, for example, by marking on the floors so that tourists or visitors are able to maintain that social distance by knowing exactly where to stand as they do their excursions. We further encourage online booking where possible to allow the management of the numbers in the facilities. We also request the tourist attraction facilities to ensure that tourists and tour guides wear their masks and sanitize regularly. So this is not no exemption. As they do the visits, they must always wear their masks. Provide sanitation where attractions have touch screens and touch buttons. For all activities such as water, quad bikes, hot air balloon, etc., we need to ensure that at all times, every time after use, the equipments and those facilities are being sanitized so that we can make sure that we do not become a source of transmission. The self-drives at game farms, the directions remains the same as per level three. So no addition, no changes in this area. On guided tours, tour guides to ensure social distancing for example, you'd find that tour guides are doing tours in the hop-in, hop-off buses. They need to make sure that within those buses or within their cars, the seats are marked properly so that we can ensure say, social distancing. Or where it's standing areas in the attractions or within the, doing the tours, they must make sure that there is a marking in terms of allowing social distancing. They must ensure that the people who are on the tours and together themselves are tour guides wear the masks and sanitize regularly. Tour guides are requested to keep records in terms of the people that they are taking on tours and they must make this available to the authorities that are relevant whenever necessary or whenever they are required. Now moving to weddings and function venues want to emphasize that as we welcome this area as well in terms of activities, want to emphasize that the maximum requirement number in terms of um, the people who attend must comply with the gatherings numbers in terms of 50 people. The second issue is that also there must be an emphasis on social distancing. We must ensure that the sanitizing in terms of the directions we are saying that make sure that there's sanitizing, the screening, there's wearing of masks at all times. But also what we want to emphasize, like we've done with our accommodations, we've done with our restaurants, no buffets should be allowed. So these are some of the activities are flagged in terms of the areas, but as we go into the directions I've highlighted, the areas that are coming back, in terms of all our attractions, in terms of all the venues um, that we have, a number of those that I've not highlighted is because they've been allowed already in level three and we've issued those directions. So we've gone just to add those that have been missing and that needed clarity for us to be able to clarify. I will be, as the minister, embarking on site visits as part of leading from the front as we encourage South Africans to not only support the tourism sector to preserve the businesses and the jobs, but also to enjoy their beautiful country after months of being in, the ho in their homes. We request you to do this responsibly and comply with all the protocols. As we travel again, we must travel safely. We will invite the media to join us for the launch of the Tourism Month as part of our domestic tourism campaign. Many of you would note that as tourism, we celebrate Tourism Month in September and we will have quite a number of activities as we bring back our to domestic tourism and tourism activities to life in this level two. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, COVID-19 surely impacted on our operations.
but certainty, certainly not our sense of hospitality. The sector stands ready to host you wherever and whether it is in, sorry, whether it is a visit to the local political garden, to a restaurant, or an overnight trip to another province. Go and enjoy yourself and don't forget to share your experiences as we strive for excellence, resilience, and competitiveness. And as I say, we travel again, but let's travel safely. Nakens. Tourism Minister in the Republic of South Africa, Mem Mamoluku Kubai Ngubani, has outlined tourism related activities under alert level two of the risk adjusted strategy and also offered directions for the sector. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. Let me check if we have uh, questions. I'll start first with calls. Ignatius, do you have uh, calls? Thanks, Chairperson. It's Ishmael. Uh, we do have a question on the line. Uh, we do mellow from Tourism Update. Please go ahead. We do mellow. Hello. I'd like to ask for the Minister, what is the update on the Tourist Guide Relief Fund that uh, started last month. Is there any update on that? Your, your question again, with Tumelo? I'd like to ask if yes. the term is, tourism minister, what is the status of the tourist guide relief fund? Have the tourist guides been paid out? And any further relief for the tourism sector as we start to reopen? Thank you very much. Thank do you. Have, you. Do you have any caller, Ishma? That's all for now. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, on the WhatsApp line, Ignatius. Thank you, Chair. Um, currently, no questions. Thank you very much, Minister. The question that was asked, the Minister is giving the uh, question to the Director General. Did you? Thank you, Tatanabele. Uh, we do mello the Tourist Guide Relief Fund. Uh, thus far, 3,116 tourist guides were paid uh, for the first month. They will be paid for the next three months. Uh, there is another batch of about 3,000 that is going through further verification with uh, the, the UIF. We just want to make sure that uh, there isn't a possibility of double dipping. There are some tourist guides that we did identify that were actually paid UIF which actually gave us a, a bit of comfort that it means there is a number of tourist guys that are actually employed out there so that 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 really was a was a good a good observation from our side further relief um we 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 all know about the the funds that 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 come from the treasury uh, initiated credit guarantee uh, facility which they are implementing with the the various banks uh, there has been some changes that were brought into that particular scheme purpose of which was to also allow for a uh, borrowing of uh, funds for operational purposes we would encourage that uh, uh, the, 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 the establishments, the businesses actually consider uh, a, a, a accessing that particular facility. Last week, Minister actually brought uh, banking, uh, the Banking Council uh, together with the uh, National Treasury uh, to, to actually outline what these uh, new provisions are and how uh, the funds can actually be accessed uh, in a webinar that she she brought uh, the industry together so we we do encourage that uh, the the industry should actually take advantage of this now that we know that uh, we have already opened for business uh, it it actually makes sense that one can then get into that facility for purposes of operations thank you
Thank you, uh, Director General. Do we have uh, any other questions? Yes, Chair. We have um, a follow-up from Witumelo, tourism update. You can go ahead, Witumelo. I'd like to ask the Ministry of Tourism, what are the regulations for Airbnb? Are Airbnb is currently allowed to operate under AP Level 2? And how are they going to ensure that they follow the regulations and protocols? Thank you very much. Other questions on WhatsApp, Ignatius? Uh, thank you, Chair. I have uh, currently three questions. Um, one question from one question from Richard from my my DB Media. The question is: Will scenic tourism flights in aeroplanes and helicopters be permitted now? And I have Marka Vermark from um, AFP. Minister, there's any indication on when borders will open up, allowing international travel. And then I have Marvin Charles from uh, Cape Ahas. Minister, regarding your engagements with the restaurants, what challenges were laid out? And regarding the curfew, did the restaurants perhaps raise any concerns about the curfew? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ishmael, do you have uh, a caller? Yes, thanks, Chair. Thank we you. do have um, one caller, Suren from MoneyWeb. You can go ahead, Suren. Good afternoon, Minister. Um, I just wanted to query um, the restrictions on uh, numbers in restaurants. Is it still restricted to 50 people or is it related to the 1.5 meter social distancing rule? Because there seems to be some confusion in the restaurant industry regarding what the um, Cocta minister mentioned yesterday um, that it might still be restricted to 50 people. Uh, for example, some restaurants have uh, bigger premises but and can host more people, but is it still restricted to 50 people? Thank you very much. Chairperson, we have another caller. Let's take the other call. Penuel Damini from Sowetin. You can go ahead, Penuel. Yes, my, my question, thank, thank you very much. My question is simple. What is specifically going to be offered by South Africa so that that is unique uh, at the time when international travel is allowed? I know we are not at that phase, but at the time that international travel is allowed, which is the given that will reach that phase, what is the department thinking that South Africa can provide to the rest of the, of the world that will set us apart from, the, from our competitors? Thank you very much, Penuel. Um, colleagues, if there are other questions, hold them. We'll then give them on the uh, next round. Minister? Thank you very much. Um, let me start with Witumelo. Under level two, all accommodations are allowed. And the directions that we have issued in terms of compliance, they apply to everybody with no exception. So if you are to book, the people who are hosting are expected to comply with all the directions that we've issued. Keeping distance, keeping record, ensuring that the masks are worn, um, if they are providing breakfast in terms of the sitting area, they must ensure that not more than 50% in terms of their floor space, they comply with those. So the all accommodation, um, there are no restrictions. If you look at the regulations, there are no restrictions for anything in terms of accommodation within level two. In terms of um, air, space in terms of tourism those activities fall under minister mbalula the flights the charter flights there will be um a response they are the responsibility of minister mbalula i wouldn't be able to uh, speak on this in terms of the activities the directions are issued by the minister of transport as they are regula uh, regulated within this um, the question on the date of international travel I always say when I talk to my sector that uh, at the beginning I got myself into trouble because I use my own projections to determine how I would be able to open. And then 
uh, there were a lot of challenges, so I don't want to get into trouble. So in terms of the risk adjusted strategy approach, there are no dates. We don't work on dates. We work in terms of the risk. So government assesses the risk to see whether the risk is high. When the risk is high, more restrictions are put, then assesses the risk. When the risk is low, then the restrictions are lowered. Our wish is to say as we come in the following either weeks or months, we should be able to see our international uh, tourism activities coming, both inbound and outbound. But we are cognizant of the constraint, the difficulties, but also the fact that globally, because of the numbers of the pandemic, the incidence of COVID-19 pandemic in our country, many destinations or many tourists might be cautious. That's why one of the things that we are doing and we are highlighting in our tourism recovery strategies to say, we want to put in place norms and standards to give comfort to an international traveler that they can come to South Africa. Uh, so that's in a nutshell. When we are ready, government will announce when the borders will be opened and will definitely give an indication as tourism. What does that mean in terms of the tourism activities? For now, we are focused on what has been opened. And as we've previously said, it's one step at a time. Um, in terms of the challenges with the restaurants on curfew, yes, it was raised with us. And you'd remember that the restaurants raised this matter with us when the curfew was at 9 p.m. The curfew was moved to 10 p.m. specifically because of the request by, amongst others, the restaurants who highlighted the difficulties because at that time they were saying to us, with 10 p.m. curfew, you are cancelling the dinner. We went and negotiated and presented their case, and that's why the curfew was moved to 10 o'clock. It was out of the, the agreement with the restaurant industry and the colleagues who made that input. So we do believe that this matter was resolved. Uh, the restriction of 50 people in terms of restaurants, I was checking with the DG, our understanding, I'll check again. Our understanding is that it's, there's no 50 pe people in a restaurant restriction. Uh, we are emphasizing the space between the tables so if you put the spacing in terms of allowing that there must be 1.5 between the tables, it's important to allow safe distancing. Not that there must be, I don't remember, uh, we've never issued directions, even under level 3 uh, and enhance, we've never said that it's 50%. 50 people, it's relating to gatherings, if you look at the regulations. All gatherings were in terms of um, your weddings, uh, what we call conferencing, meetings, uh, those we do have directions directly that speaks to that. In a restaurant, because once you start saying that, as you say, the spacing, if it allows for spacing that we are able to manage. But we'll look into that. We do not have large groups of restaurants uh, that are able, because if we start saying this, somebody can be scared to say, hey, because the restaurants, it means they are going to be a source of the spread, because if you have a restaurant that has capacity to carry 2,000 people, mean they can have 2,000 people. No, we do not say that, because it will really make Minister Mkiza worried when he hears something like that. We do know that our restaurants, in terms of space and capacity, they don't carry many people, and we are able to ensure that with the regulations and the directions that we, we have issued, they do make sure that we are able to uh, still preserve the lives and also the livelihoods. Um, a question about South Africa uh, that was asked um, from a colleague in Soweten, just to indicate that, as, as I said in my input, uh, the statement, if you look, we have done an analysis um, looking globally, and that's why we talk about today's traveller and tomorrow's traveller. Today's traveller, for example, as we say, is cautious about moving from one country to the other previously. Somebody could easily come to South Africa, move to Zimbabwe or Zambia, move to another, maybe Tanzania. Today we do note that some of the travelers, the feedback we are getting is that they are very cautious. 
uh, because they are worried that if you move from different areas, you might not even be able to track where you got the virus or you might even put yourself into more uh, danger. Now, what they are looking for is a country that offers diversity of products, where, for example, if they want to go to the sea, they are able to access that. The one nature reserve, they are able to get that. The one scenery, they are able to get that. And because of our diversity in terms of products, you can either you are an adventure or you are a person that loves romance or you are an active person that in terms of sports, uh, we do have all that in terms of the product. So we are comfortable in terms of destination South Africa as a product to be able to sell it to the global market. We are able to say within this diversity of our products as a destination, we can talk to young people. We can talk to couples, we can talk to families with small children, we can talk to singles, uh, we can talk to senior citizens. We've got everything that any particular category is looking for. We can talk to business people in terms of our conferencing. Um, so those are the things that puts us as a destination on the map and one of the most preferred destination as we look in terms of the analysis. What we will be doing is to be able to ensure that we let global travelers know what South Africa has to offer. And those who have not come into contact with this beautiful country can be able to know what we have to offer. But more importantly, if you know about South Africa, is the hospitality. Our people remains our key source resource, uh, key resource in terms of being able to be hospitable, look after our tourists, because out of those, many who have been here, who have left, have carried the message to say, somebody must come. I'm one of the people in terms of global platforms that I talk to people, and I had a group of friends who were intending to come to South Africa, uh, and COVID stopped them. But they have not literally stopped they've postponed their trips and they're looking forward to coming to south africa when the borders are opened and because of that we are relying on some of them who have been here as word of mouth beyond what we will be doing in terms of our targeted marketing to be able to attract international tourists to come here so we are not only sitting as tourism department and the portfolio waiting the day the borders are opened we have started in terms of our work as we say, we started with intra provinces and we said one step at a time. We started preparing for inter provincial movements. Now our work begins today. So start preparing. And others already have started to prepare intensively for the international borders and to receive the international tourists. When they arrive, they will find a South Africa that is warm and that has so much to offer to them. But until then, we are relying on you South Africans to be able to get out and support the tourism industry. But not only support us, we want you to enjoy this beautiful country. There's so many things that you have not seen. There's so many things that you have not done. And I think it's time to explore this country. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. Uh, colleagues, can we take just the last round of questions um, before the Minister then closes the press briefing? Let me check from the callers. Ishmael, do you have callers? Thanks, Chair. We don't have questions on the line. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. The last line um, on the WhatsApp line, I Ignatius. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have Marvin Charles from K uh, Cape Achas. It's a follow-up question. Um, he's saying, should a res restaurant not comply with a curfew, what will happen or what will the consequence be? <laughs> um, I have uh, Helen Ilov from Custom Local Media. She says, I know that the, gov the gazetted regulations specifically exclude nightclubs from the establishments that may be open. What criteria differentiates a pub, a bar, or a tavern from a nightclub? I have um, Adwal Lamini from Alliance News. What does the department hope to achieve from the tourism recovery strategy? How does it differ from the relief package 
put together for the industry already. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, this was the last round of questions. Uh, Minister, thank you. Okay. Uh, let me start by saying let's not tempt the restaurants not to comply. So we're not talking about non-compliance, we're talking about compliance. I do talk to them quite regularly. We have an agreement that we are not going to not comply. Uh, so we must comply with the cafe. Consequences is that the owner will be arrested together with the manager. That's what it means. And then the justice system will take care of that. So once they don't comply, it becomes the matter of the justice system and the police, no longer the matter of the Minister of Tourism. Uh, so that's what Minister Begitzele will be talking. And we had a conversation this morning. He did emphasize that I need to make it clear that colleagues, please comply with the CAF so that we don't create that he has to have large trucks of vans on the streets uh, having to carry people. We didn't want that. And that's why I've always said to the sector, our responsibility is to make sure that we do not regress what we have already achieved. So I rely on you. I can do my part as the minister, but you have to play your part as well. The issue of nightclubs, yes, are not allowed um, currently in terms of the regulations. I do not, as a Minister of Tourism, have authority over the nightclubs, but the logic in terms of the discussion, nightclub is something that is at night, isn't it? Uh, maybe I'm just being simplicity. Uh, just in my understanding, I think the relevant minister can explain who licenses them, but my understanding is that because it's 10 p.m. curfew, and nightclubs normally uh, would go until early hours of the morning. Uh, because they start normally arriving at 10, 11 o'clock. That's the time where the curfew has already started. I think that's the simplicity. But I don't want to get in myself into trouble. It's not within my area of work. Uh, my area is relating to the restaurants. Uh, and that's why even on the bars, I'm referring to the bars that are within the premises of our attractions, the premises of the tourism facilities that they need to comply. 10 o'clock, even if it's a bar in a hotel, at 10 o'clock they need to close. They need to have closed because it's it's a curfew time. Curfew starts at 10. Um, how do we differentiate the recovery with the relief fund? Relief fund, it was a once-off activity where we were giving money the recovery, I'm not so sure if the colleague has seen our document. Recovery talks about long-term strategy, about what we are going to do to get the sector back working. Part of this opening is part of the recovery. Starting when the recovery, we talk about having firstly the domestic market coming to life and getting the activities back on track and also putting together the norms and standards for us to be able to say to the traveler abroad, we are safe, but also here at home that you can know that you are safe to travel and you'll come back without worrying about that. But also looking at internationally, because as you see, we have lost a lot of money as a sector. We have lost jobs. We have lost businesses. That's the reality. And part of why the recovery is important for tourism is to be able to say, how do we come out of this pandemic and become better? How do we create an environment that will make that those who have lost jobs regain their jobs back? Those who have lost their businesses are able to find a way to come back into the businesses. In the recovery, we don't talk about stimulus because we do not have uh, the fiscal space to do that. We're talking about marketing the country and having people like yourselves traveling, spending your money in the tourism sector so that tourism businesses can regain their status, can be able to become viable again. Also, talks to international market where international tourists will come, increasing our numbers so that when they come and spend their dollars, their euros, and the other currencies that are stronger than rent, we are able to make sure that the contribution is able to rebuild, but also to see growth in terms of the tourism sector. So the tourism recovery strategy goes beyond what we have done in providing a relief fund. 
it goes about rebuilding the sector in terms of the supply and demand side. It looks in that in terms of the entire value chain of the tourism, direct and indirect activities. Because when we have tourism, for example, the restaurants operating fully, the hotels operating fully, then you know that, for example, sectors such as agriculture have a market because we buy from them as a sector. So it's about, that's why we talk about the tourism sector being one of the pillars to grow the economy of this country. Because when we thrive, a lot of sectors that are dependent on us will be able to find a value and will be able to also find a way of coming back actively. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister. I know I said uh, that was the last round of questions, but it appears there is uh, one question uh, that uh, they want to ask. I'm not sure, is it through the landline or through the WhatsApp? Let me check with uh, Salimali. Is it through the landline? No, Chairperson, it's, it, it's through the WhatsApp. Ignatius. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have one question from Vuyom Vogo from ENCA. Um, I hope this one relates to tourism. The, the question is, what is the position on international travel of athletes? The women's cricket team has called off their tour to England. So that is set for September. But individual athletes have managed to leave the country for competitions. Please, can we have clarity? Thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, I think... Minister can just answer okay, from just there. to indicate that's Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, Minister Mtetra's work. Okay. No, thank you very much, uh, Minister. Uh, to all the viewers at home and those who are listening uh, on their devices, thank you very much uh, for according your time, according us your time for this briefing. Minister DG, we thank you very much. The press briefing is adjourned. Thank you. Hello.